Hello there, it's a pleasure to have you join us at the New Times Rwanda. I am Davis Hijiro. Today, with great pleasure again, we have a special guest. Rwandan award-winning actress, birds are singing in Kigali, and the incredible trees of peace. Ladies and gentlemen, Eliane Omuhire. Eliane, how are you? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Dennis. First of all, allow me to congratulate you on this um, new movie that yeah. you're featuring in Trees of Peace that's soon premiering on Netflix. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I would like us to start uh, by you introducing yourself to us. Tell us who you are, who is Eliana Mohiri. Yes, my name is Eliana Mohiri, as you said. Um, I'm an actress. I'm from Rwanda. I was born and raised here. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm an actress and performer, stage and films. Um, I started acting on stage uh, in 2005, if I'm not mistaken, when I was in Butare, where I was doing my, my university studies. And then I started acting in films in 2014, when I was casted in British Sen and Kigali. From 2014, how many movies, how many films have you featured in? If I count those which are still uh, in production, post-production, I'll say something like seven, mm -hmm. seven films. Actually, six films plus one series. Uh, and the series will come out uh, this year, I think, in September. It's a French series that we shot in France um, last year and uh, it's now in post-production. Post there is a similarity between birds are singing in Kigali, trees of peace and bridge of roses. They yes. all talk about the Rwandan history, yes. the genocide that took place in 1994 against Tutsi. Mm -hmm. What feeling do you get um, from telling stories, telling history of your country to the world yeah, well, um, as an actress, I feel like I'm an ambassador. Mm. So it's, a, it's mandatory for me to tell those stories because as a Rwandan, that's my way of contributing to the, to the history of my country and my own history. And um, I feel like it's almost like ringing the bell to the, it's, to the rest of the world, like this is what happened back in my country. And if you don't pay attention, it can still happen somewhere else. Um, and also a way of, of paying tribute to the victims and to the survivors who fought to live. You've been in Mashrika. Yes. I think Mashrika has added um, uh, something on your skill set. And uh, what's the, ex the, the exception of Mashrika in spotting uh, young talents and developing them? Well, I'm here because um, I think I was artistically raised or yeah, I was artistically raised by women, and actually there are two women, it's not only Mashereka, there is Mashereka with Hopa Zeda, and there is um, Kahor Kalimira from Isha Art Center, and these two women are the ones who really took me under their wings and walked me through this path of, uh, of my artistic journey. Um, when I first met Hope and Sam at Mashereka, they gave me the space, they gave me uh, the flow that you had in Mashereka, and they were like, this is your creative space, go on and play. There was also like, we created a kind of family. We have, I, I, I like saying that we have this, like a promotion, like a class of Mashirika with Atta Hussi, Angel Mahoro, Simon Rema, Kaitari Charles, Pendo Anita. Like, so, we have this class of, um, of Mashirika where we were just crazy creating. And uh, yeah, what you're saying about spotting talents, it's more about giving space to the talents, and mm. that's the particularity of and also of Kahol, because she did the same. Talking about Mashirika, I want you to name for us um, five people that have passed through Mashirika and they are now like great people outside here. There is Atan Hussi, there is uh, Pendo, Pendo Anita, I've just named them. Pendo Anita, there is Angel Mahoro, there is uh, Simon Gema. There is uh, Jonathan Kuwakundimana, who is now in the US. Um, those are already five, yeah? <laughs> what do you admire in the, in the Rwandan film and arts industry? Hmm, I'm loving the fact that there is a new generation which don't care. Everyone is creating. And uh, recently I went to the French Institute and there was a performance. And every young 
um, artist who was going on stage was um, introducing her, him or herself saying, I'm, I'm not a disciplinary artist. And that is huge, that is so rich, because when I was, I was, saying, when I was growing up artistically, we were going into one direction. I'm either a musician or, or, a, or, or an actor, but not both. While now we have, we, we have artists who are into camera, photo, well, camera, uh, fashion, um, poem, poetry, acting, singing, like they embrace everything. And that shows um, the new generation, the Rwanda that we have now, where everything's growing and uh, everything's thriving, and it's beautiful to see. And uh, particularly on the, because you're asking me about the film industry, it's the same in the film industry. We have now um, directors who are, who are winning hours everywhere in Fespaco, in Germany, in, in Berlinale. Um, we, and, and they're telling stories of, of our daily lives and uh, in such an artistic and honest and authentic, authentic way. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just super proud. What is the most challenging thing you face in your career of acting? Um, well, first, every day when, I'm, when I have a new character, it's a challenge of uh, getting to that character, um, getting the world of that character. But I will say, uh, on my artistic journey, I had a shift, I, I moved countries right before COVID. Actually, at the moment, COVID was starting. And I went from Rwanda to France and establishing myself in a new country where I didn't have any contacts was, whew, was a huge challenge. And uh, also arriving at the moment when there was a, a crisis like COVID, when Everyone was uh, stating that it was the end of the film and uh, the theater industry. I said, like, what am I going to do? Am I changing careers? <laughs> but it happened to be actually um, a push for me to, to go beyond my comfort zone and embracing humility and vulnerability to be able to make it through and, and finally establish myself as an actress in France, a London actress in France. How can you define that process of being molded into a humble person? The process of being redefined, being uh, allowing yourself to not even giving up. I think there is a story you can you can tell us about not giving up because yeah. sometimes hardships come and we are uh, think I should quit. What's yeah. the beauty in not giving up? It's the best thing that can happen to us because it molds you, as you say, it crushes you like oh, into pieces, to be molded together into something new. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a scary journey. Because <laughs> you don't know what happened. I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I considered quitting, I considered being um, a woman. We, we don't have so much representation of women in the film. Being black in a Western, <laughs> in a Western country. There were so many reasons, and being new, having an, an accent in my French, even though I grew up speaking French, but I'm, I can't speak, and I'm glad that I can't speak French like French people. And there were so many reasons why I wouldn't have made it to where I am. I'm still a work in progress, but I'm so grateful for what I have today. Mm. And this, it's because I had to, to go through that accepting. Um, I used to think like vulnerability is a weakness. Actually, vulnerability is, is a strength and it's the best thing that can happen to us because through vulnerability and through humility, we discover how much strong we are. When things do not go the way you wanted, you thought and you wanted them to go, at times people are, get to be depressed. Yeah. Do you agree? Yes, sorry. I, I, I considered quitting, I considered giving up, mm. and I, yes, I had my low moments. Mm. <laughs> and uh, one thing that helped me was uh, meditation, mm. doing, doing meditation and uh, journaling every day. Mm. Um, also working out, and okay. uh, yeah, and reaching out to people. Um, but mainly that moment of withdrawing and sitting and connecting with myself and revisiting myself 
a heart and not. And uh, it also showed me, not only helping me to cope with, um, with going through this process, but also showing me um, the wealth and the treasure that I had in me. Um, because there is that little voice that we always carry with us that is always talking to us and it's never nice. It's yeah. always telling us, who are you? Who am I? Arriving in this new country, who is going even to open an email with the name Umuhiri? Like, who is she? Not even, no one is recommending me. And uh, so like that little voice like, uh, well, yes, you worked with this and this and this and this. You had these awards and all, so maybe that was one part of your life and that's it, that's the end. But um, taking time to withdraw and sitting and reframing that voice and really taking time to see what, like, also what I had and what I have as, um, as uh, with everything that I did with my career up to the moment when I reached in France was of value, of great value. And uh, having an accent, it's, it's a value to me. It's, an, it, it's, a, it's a plus, not, not a handicap. Uh, being black, it's a beauty and it's a strength. Uh, being Rwandan, it's another strength. And uh, like I have something to, like uh, reaching a moment of knowing like I have something to add to this industry. And I have to push, push, push until an op uh, a door is going to open. Mm -hmm. And eventually that door opened. So it's a huge lesson. <laughs> uh, tell us, what is, it, what is it like to be a lady in the film industry, to be black? In the film industry. That's, that was the first thing that my agent told me when I finally booked uh, an agent team. They were like, we are going to be honest with you, it might be difficult because you are a woman and you are black. And uh, I could see that many roles that were coming, I could see like all the advertisement of roles, it, it, they were mainly about, um, how can I say, uh, stereotyped cliche roles for black. Um, there is a day I was sent uh, the casting for, it's a popular series in, Fra in France, which is called um, Plus, Belle la Vie. Plus Belle la Vie. And uh, I was like, oh, this is huge. I should, uh, I should do the casting. But then when I, when I read about the role description, who was this immigrant girl um, who had suffered and was doing everything possible to earn money so she can send it to her family in Mali, back in Mali, her family that was starving. I was like, no, no, this, these are not the kind of roles I want to do. This first, it doesn't portray this woman in her dignity. Uh, it doesn't portray this African, uh, Malian girl in her dignity. It's always like belittling um, uh, foreigners, because it's not just black who are, who are foreigners in France. So I, like I was saying, in passing through this process helped me to really um, redefine what, what, which kind of roles I wanted. Because I know it's an everyday struggle being a girl, a woman now, um, and being black, because I know that most of the roles are going to come for, because that's the society that I'm living in. So producers are going to, producers and directors and writers are going to, write about their own reality, about their own society. So it's another challenge for us as, 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 uh, as immigrants, no, as foreigners, or as black, or as Asians, to write our own stories, to direct our own stories, to produce our own stories. You've been through that um, phase in your life where you think um, you've lost everything. What would be your message to a person who has lost hope, who thinks there is no future? Um, life is just beautiful, so um, the first thing to do is acknowledging um, the smallest thing that surrounds us. From the moment I wake up, really, because we have so many things around us, but sometimes when we are in those dark places, we don't, it's hard to see them. But um, really starting by the little things that surround us, uh, there are some people who say like counting your blessings. It's a very good exercise, um, counting our blessings, because we are so blessed every single day. And when we start counting our blessings, we start seeing the blessings that are around us, but also the blessings that we have inside us, which is that willpower. That willpower will never go away. 
sometimes can get clouded because that's life. We have to go through phases. Today I'm up on the mountain, tomorrow I'm going to go down in the valley. And uh, acknowledging that I'm in this valley and I, I need strength, I need, I need hope to go uphill again. Uh, can you tell us like um, a glimpse of what you have for us in the future, any project, any big things we can expect in Rwanda or even um, worldwide? So, um, uh, well, there's some few stuff that are coming out this year and I'm, I'm super excited because wow. <laughs> they put so much love and um, so much work in it. In them, there is, uh, we've just finished shooting um, a feature film, a feature film in Congo. It's a film by Baloji, who is um, a Belgo Congolese um, artist. He's super huge and he has. Oh, he's crazy, he's good in <laughs> what he does. Mm -hmm. And um, there's this series I was talking about that will be coming out. Mm -hmm. There is Trees of Peace that's coming on Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, there is also, Frost. yeah, Neptune Frost that's now being released in the US. Mm -hmm. There is also a one woman show that I'm, I'm doing with a Brazilian director in France. And I'm hoping that we will be able to bring it here because it's a powerful piece about. Um, uh, women who decide to immigrate alone because now like research has uh, proven that um, now more and more women decide to go abroad in living other countries not just like uh, illegal immigrants you know just deciding as a girl like today I want to move countries and go live in a new country so the play talks about what is it being a, a woman in a new country what do you bring from your home what do you leave behind and how do you feel when you go back in, in, to, back to your home country um, so yeah so there are a few some few stuff coming out and uh, I'm going to tell you a quote, mm -hmm. and then you're going to tell me who said it. Ooh, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> no, not bad. You just listen. <laughs> I hope one day I will be a woman who doesn't sell vegetables, but sells roses. I hope one day I'll be a woman who doesn't sell vegetables, but sells roses. Ah, oof, I didn't lose props. <laughs> So that is Grace um, from Bridge of Roses. Mm. Yes. I'll be a woman who doesn't sell vegetables, but sells roses. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah. So the next oh, thing. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's five years ago. <laughs> You now sell roses? I think I also sell vegetables. They are both needed in this life. So I don't know why you chose even um, roses. Why you don't like vegetables? Yeah, I don't think it's. A, it was a way for Grace to say like, um, I won't take care of this child. So as we come to an end, I'm going to show you pictures of people, and you're gonna define them in two words. Oh. A picture of a person, and then you define them in two words. Okay. The first one is him. Ah, friendship, hardworking. Okay. Um, her. Uh, creative and blossoming. Okay. That's a good short description about everyone. And now as we come to an end, there is a game we want to play. Okay. It's a game called Would You Rather? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now how this game works, I'm going to ask you a question. And then it's two questions, in, uh, actually. So you'll have to pick one. Okay. Okay. So the first question is, would you rather have to wear every shirt inside out or every pair of pants backwards? Uh, a shirt. Every shirt? Yeah. Inside, inside out. Inside out. Okay. Would you rather find true love today or win the lottery next year? Well, I don't feel like true love exists, actually, like, not in one particular moment. And uh, lottery, I'm really bad with lottery, so uh, love is always everywhere. So <laughs> I can't really say I would rather choose one. Yeah. So, so would you rather have a pause or mm -hmm. rewind button in your life? Pause so I can enjoy all that sounds. Okay. Yeah. 
would um, no the, the last one for the rest of your life would you rather stay in Rwanda or in France live in both <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not you have to choose for the rest of for your the life, rest of my life would you uh, rather stay in Rwanda or Rwanda. in France oh, home is always the best Elian, thank you so much for making time to be here. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for this moment. And thank you too for watching The New Times Rwanda. We really, we really appreciate your company. And if you want to watch more videos, please hit the subscription button. And we can always continue this conversation uh, on our social medias. Uh, Twitter is New Times Rwanda Instagram is the New Times Rwanda. You can ask any question to Eliane, she will respond and uh, we as well will respond um, if we have any um, response to your questions. Thank you so much, my name is David Sijiro. For the moment, allow us to say goodbye.